your children and makes you dinner. What's the appropriate, 97% of undocumented men work full time. What's the appropriate response to that crime? Maybe it's not ripping apart Liliana's family. Maybe it's not ripping apart Jean's family. Maybe there are better responses to that crime. The sanctuary movement is a response of biblical hospitality in the name of the cities of refuge. It's a way of saying, under this broken system, there are many people at this moment in history who cannot get a fair hearing. How do we accompany those people? How do we stand with them? How do we stand up for them? Because when we do, we reframe the public debate. That we treat them, when we treat them in the name of biblical hospitality, we treat them as guests and not invaders. Maybe guests who have broken the law, but guests and not invaders. That's a very important contribution to the larger debate. It doesn't answer the policy questions, but it lays a foundation, it lays a biblical foundation for beginning to answer the policy questions. The last thing that I want to say to you, um, and you know, I want, I want to say more about the variety of ways that people are responding. We have a sanctuary movement around the country in 37 cities. Uh, we also have some work that we're doing in Orange County, in California, a very, very conservative area with evangelical mega churches and immigrant uh, congregations, evangelical congregations. We have some work that we're doing with African American congregations and immigrant congregations. A variety of different ways that we're practicing biblical hospitality, not just through the traditional sanctuary movement, but I don't think I have time to talk about it, so just write me a question. <laughs> I'll be glad to tell you about any of the stories of those that work. Um, I also would like to talk to you about what does it mean to have compassion for people that are hurt by immigration. Um, and maybe, I, I haven't actually looked at my watch to see. Is that you doing timekeeping to see how much time I have? How much time do I have? Oh, good. Then I actually can tell that one, because that one's important. Um, but what I want to say before I say that, is I want to say something about biblical hospitality. I talked about how we reframe when we begin to stand with the immigrants and to respond to their stories with compassion, how we reframe the debate so that we're looking at them as guests and not invaders. But I actually want to take it one step farther than that. One of my favorite passages recently in the whole Bible is Hebrews 13.1. I think that it's actually guide, a guideline for life. Just one little verse, Hebrews 13.1. One, two, actually. One and a half verses. Practice hospitality because you may be welcoming angels without knowing it. Practice hospitality, because you may be welcoming angels without knowing it. What if immigrants are angels? What if they're sent here to give us a blessing? One of the pastors who's part of one of our projects is a man named Rene Molina. He's the pastor of the Iglesia de Restauración. He has, um, 6,000 members, he believes that he was called to come to this country. Uh, it took quite a while for the federal government to agree. <laughs> but he believed it long before the federal government did. And if you look at what he's brought to this country, it would be hard to say no. His wife, like Sarah, didn't have any particular call from God. She just came, also undocumented, to be with her name. Was she called to be here? They've certainly been a blessing to this country. So, you know, to begin to raise the possibility that immigrants have blessings, that really repays the debate, doesn't it? I want to say, what do we do with compassion for the people that are hurt by immigration? I need to tell you the story of Reverend Donald Wilson. Reverend Donald Wilson is a missionary Baptist pastor, African American in South LA, and he's also a hotel worker. He's an assistant chef in a luxury hotel. And he's been there for 26 years in his hotel. When he first came to his hotel, they had a very strong union. And they had living wages, and they had health insurance, and they had seniority. And you know that the people in that hotel who had all those benefits actually were able to send their kids to college. Because they had, you know, they were doing okay. But then at a certain point, 
the luxury hotel chain that he worked for started hiring a lot of immigrants. Now, they weren't hiring all undocumented immigrants, but immigrants tend to be frightened, tend to be fairly easily intimidated. Um, so the immigrants that were being hired didn't really fight back when the company began to destroy the union. They, they really didn't fight back. They, they just were happy to have a job. So Donna Wilson saw the wages go down, and he saw them start to lose their health benefits. And you know what he said? He said, get all these undocumented people out of this country <laughs> now. We have fun. We're doing it? Yeah. We have fought so hard to get to this point. We can't lose it. Um, but then the hotel companies started hiring, to them all immigrants looked alike, and they started hiring not only Mexican immigrants, but Salvadoran immigrants. Well, a number of people, as you may know, who came here from El Salvador, came here because they were fleeing injustice, and they were active Christians, and they were actively involved in just social justice work. And they have been through terrible trauma. They are refugees. So they started hiring those refugees. And those refugees came in and saw what was going on and said, where's our union? So they started joining Donald Wilson and working side by side and fighting side by side. And they got their union back together. And not only did they get, um, not only did they get back their living wages and they got back their health benefits, but they also got a clause. They got two clauses in the contract. They got a clause that helped people not get fired immediately if they had immigration difficulties, but allowed a period of time for them to fight to get their immigration status in order. And they got a clause in that fought for the rehiring of African Americans for diversity outreach and hiring and monitoring together. And what Donald Wilson says is he said, you know, I thought of them as taking away our jobs. I forgot that there was somebody who was giving away the jobs. And that the same people who were giving away those jobs we're also taking jobs to Indonesia. And that we needed to come together to hold those people accountable. He said that my anger with the immigrants was a diversion from the real battle that we needed to be about together. So yes, there are being people, there are people who are being hurt by illegal immigration. No question about it. But what is the solution? Again, what is the solution? They have committed a crime, but what is the appropriate penalty? We have to start asking different questions if we see the world through a biblical lens. Thank you.